This week in the Revealing the Hebrew Letters series, I want to talk to you about the letter Gamel. It's the third letter in the Hebrew alphabet. There's a lot of symbolic meaning there. And I want you to stay with us for the rest of this video because I have a special announcement coming up at the very end here. But let's talk about the Gamel. It's a picture of a man walking. Now, it's the third letter in the Hebrew alphabet. The next letter, in which we'll be talking about next week, is the letter Dalit. But the Gamel is said to be a man walking or chasing after the Dalit. Now, I have to tell you just a little bit about what the Dalit's about to explain the Gamel. And the Dalit is a picture of a man bent over in humbleness. And so this Gamel is said to be the man of righteousness. And it's said to be a rich man running after the poor man, the Dalit. And he is running after him to give him something, to give him charity. And so the Gamel is said to be uh, somebody that is giving, that is trying to help and to give, but not to the point of where they're just giving uh, riches, but they're giving them wisdom and how to get riches. And so let's look at that Gamel for a moment. It represents the abundance of God. God is abundantly rich. Amen. He has everything. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He owns it all. He owns the universe. He is the universe. So why wouldn't he own everything? So we have this picture of God running after us to give us things. Many people think that Christians are supposed to be poor, that they're supposed to have nothing. However, we get this concept incorrect because we're supposed to be poor in spirit, not poor in pocketbook. Because God wants to give us things. Father God, He wants to give us gifts. He's a good God. He's a good Father. And He wants to give us good things. And so without Him, though, we are poor in spirit because without Him, we are completely dependent on God. Without Him, we are in poverty. We have nothing. And so man is poor innately. However, because of God, because we are children of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, we can have what he wants to give us. And he's chasing after us to give us something, to give us charity, to redeem our souls, not just money, but to give us not just wealth either, but to give us healing, to give us power, to give us all the things that we need to be helpful towards the kingdom of God. And so God isn't wanting to give us things just to give it to us. He's wanting to give us power and wisdom and how to get things. In other words, in Deuteronomy 8, it says that, remember that it was the Lord that gave us the power to get wealth. That word power there is the word koach, and it means potential or to the power or the potential to get something. So in other words, God gives us the potential to get wealth. He gives us the potential to get things. Many times we think that things are just supposed to drop in our laps in which God is actually gives us the potential to get things for ourselves. There's an old saying that says, you know, it's better to teach a man to fish than just to give him a fish. I would totally agree with that, that it's better for someone to teach you how to do things, how to create, as opposed to just give you everything. No one is entitled to anything. God seeks to give us not just the answers, but the knowledge and how to get the answers. And so really that is a, a great symbology of the letter Gamel, the rich man running after the poor man. He's wanting to give us something, wealth and riches and knowledge and how to get those things as well. It's to give to someone till they are self-sustaining and able to bless other people. Not enabling, but giving the ability to walk out and to bless others. You see, we aren't giving, we aren't giving just to get things. We are giving to bless others. And that our hearts should always be to bless God and to bless His people. When we have that type of mindset, we have the mindset of the Gamel, which is giving not just to supply a need to someone, but to bless the kingdom of God and to bless them to a point to where they are self-sustaining as well. That is a whole different mindset than 
just me, 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 I've got to give to get, give to get. Yes, you will be blessed when you give. However, at the same time, it's so much more that you get than just regular old riches of this world. It's you're getting and receiving something that is immeasurable. And that is the ability to give someone else the ability to sustain themselves. And so this is the gamel. And I want to talk to you about uh, the number three. Of course, the, the number three is the Trinity. <clears throat> we believe in Christianity that God is one God. However, that he is in three persons. So we see that number of the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit there in the Gamel. Some say that it's represented of the number of the Holy Spirit being Aleph would be God the Father, Beit would be the number of the Son, and Gamel, would, number three, would be the number of the Holy Spirit. And so we see God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit all present at creation. The rich man running after the poor man. Gamel thus represents the free choice to run after the teaching of God by practicing acts of loving kindness. And so we are practicing loving kindness by going after the Word of God because the Word of God tells us to give. The Word of God tells us to teach. I love to teach my children things. I love to teach them uh, not just the answers, and I have to tell them my littlest one because we homeschool our kids, and what's funny is she always wants the answer. She'll bring you the book, and she'll throw it down in front of you, and she'll say, here. And I'll say, what do you want, Callie? And she'll say, I don't know what to do. I'll say, well, let's talk about it. You know, I'll try to teach her how to get to the answer and give her the instruction. But inevitably, she'll, she'll always want me just to give her the answer. However, a good teacher doesn't just give you the answers. A good teacher will teach you how to get to the answers. And so we, we need to seek God out as the rich man, as the uh, kinsman redeemer, uh, who is also repre represented here. This is a representation of the kinsman redeemer. Of course, Jesus Christ is the kinsman redeemer. As he runs after us and gives us things, wanting to help us to come to those answers, we need to be going back to seek the answer from him. God desires for us to seek out answers. He desires for us to, uh, to understand his word more. You know, God could absolutely just give us all the answers if he wanted to. He could just drop them right in our laps. However, that's not the way that Elohim operates. He desires for us to seek him out as well. If you're in a marriage with someone, what good would it be if it were all one-sided? If only one person said, I love you and gave you gifts and you know gave you love and affection, yet the other side just expected to receive it all the time, but never to give back as well, never to seek out that love for themselves. It's the same way with God. He seeks a relationship with us through Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. He wants us to run after him as he's running after us. And so we should seek the deeper things of God. There are secrets that are hidden within the Word of God and within these traditions of the Jewish customs even that, that many Christians don't even scratch the surface of because they don't dare go deep enough into the Word of God. I encourage you to go a little bit deeper, to look at things deeper than just the, surf, the surface. There are uh, four ways that uh, rabbis will tell you that there's an understanding of Scripture that goes deeper than just the first level. It goes down to the fourth level, which is the sod, which means the deep hidden things. God hide thing, hides things not to hide them from you or to keep you from them. God hides them so you'll seek them out. So you'll seek the face of God out even more and on a more intimate level. Now, I want to tell you before we uh, end this video today, next week, you're not going to want to miss this. We're going to talk about the letter Dalit, but I'm going to have a special guest with me. Pastor Keith Trump from Carmel, Indiana is going to be joining us for the letter Dalit next week. Now, Pastor Keith Trump 
has many, many accolades. He was raised in a Jewish home. He knows the Hebrew alphabet better than anyone that I know, and he knows all the numbers and meanings. He has accreditation from many colleges, many universities, and he even talks a lot about this in seminars through the Handling Hebrew seminars all over the world. So Keith Trump, you're not gonna wanna miss it. Our guest here in the studio next Tuesday, talking about the letter dollar. We're gonna break this thing down. You're absolutely gonna be amazed, I believe, at what God is going to reveal to you. So you're not gonna wanna miss that. Thank you so much for joining us today. Please be sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and ring that notification bell so you can receive updates for when new content arrives. Also be sure to visit our website at gbreaker.org. From there you can learn more about Groundbreaker International, and if the Lord leads you to do so, you can sow a financial seed of blessing. Now, I would like to invite you to check out one of these other videos from Groundbreaker International's YouTube channel. Until next time, God bless.